Hey guys, what's happening? So I'm in the process of uh, building an ABS printer here and I wanted to actually uh, possibly upgrade the screen here. So I'm looking at this, uh, I was looking online, Amazon, and I saw the screen on sale for $27. Um, and it was uh, it's a five inch DSi touch screen for a Raspberry Pi. Um, but I didn't really see any reviews on this thing or even like a cover. So I designed like a, like a mount for it that's going to go on here. Um, but I wanted to get clipper on this thing. So, um, yeah, the issue with my 3.5, even though know, it actually works perfectly fine, it just the, uh, it's such a, so low, like super uh, low resolution. And it's not, I mean, it's an old, I've actually had this screen for probably almost 10 years, probably. Um, a long, long time. It's, this is actually a GPIO um, screen. And the GPIO screens don't seem to be as high quality as like the DSi screens. And I, I do actually have a lot of experience with the DSi screens. I have one here on my uh, printer bot here. I run one on the uh, Orca printer here. And then I also run one on the Solari Toss. So I am actually am familiar with these things. Um, so, I mean, they seem to be... The, like these, uh, the GPI, GPIO screens, they you have to do a lot of configuration on their headache. So anytime you have to reformat your system, it's you have to go through a lot of headaches to get it going again. But from my experience, the DSi screens are just a lot easier to get up. So I was actually kind of surprised uh, at $27, you know. Um, it was like a 32 plus like a 5% deal. Um, so it ended up being like 27 plus tax. Plus, I live in California, so they added an additional $4 for some recycling fee for a screen. It's crazy. So, um, yeah, so I'm actually I'm printing out another one of these. This one wasn't actually perfect, so um, let me show you. I'm going to take the Raspberry Pi 3 B Plus out of here and then hook it onto there. And um, I'm going to load the software on it. You know, the 7 inch, seven -inch uh, official touchscreens that I'm currently using um, are probably like 60 bucks, 70 bucks online. Um, so it's not too much difference in price. So um, I just this printer wasn't big enough to have a seven-inch touch screen. Um, yeah, so it came with some acrylic standoffs and some a screw pack. So all right, so I'm gonna mount the uh, pie here. All right. All right, so I'm gonna fire this up. So there's actually a backlight button here too. So in my in my case, I had designed a hole for that too, so I can get to it. Um, yeah, because this is gonna be fully contained, and the wire will be going to the back. Um, it's, it's all going to be fed. It's going to be powered by a buck converter internally. Then I'm going to have a Raspberry Pi cam coming back through here. Then I'm also going to have an accelerometer on there. Um, I'm actually going to have a GPO, GPIO uh, accelerometer, not the USB one. Yeah, so that's a fresh install of Maintel OS. And uh, it's a brand new SD card. So it's one of those high uh, read-write SD cards. So if this thing actually works anything like the 7-inch touchscreen, the 7-inch touchscreen boots like it's, it will actually boot right on the, uh, it will get power and boot on. Whereas this one won't even enable until you actually go in and modify drivers and settings and the uh, DT overlay. I'm not going to do a full like Linux install, at least I'm not going to show you how to do that. Um, what I'll do is in the video description I'll put down what files you need to modify and what you need to add to them. Um, yeah, but it's pretty much just standard DSi uh, screen. Uh, they, to me, like, I mean, I've been messing with Raspberry Pi for over 10 years, but the DSi ones are always the easiest ones to get going. All right, so that's what I expect. Um, yeah, like with the typical, like I said, the typical screen, like a GPIO uh, screen, you won't see the booting up. So it's not going to give any, uh, I'm not going to get any um, clipper screens. I'm going to log into, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Kaua. So I'm going to log into that and install clipper screen that way. And... Um, all right, looking good. I mean, I can. The main thing is I wanted a better quality. This thing had low resolution in it, so I wanted to have higher quality so I could actually see what I was looking at. Yeah, I mean, this will be if it works good. This will be a really nice, cheap alternative to a much more expensive screen. All right, so I fired this thing's about a total breeze, but let me show you the. If you're not familiar with this, I'm not going to show you the complete install, but I'm going to drag this page over here. All right, so that's, this is the program. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Kaiua. All right, so um, just give me a matter. I want to install, do a one install. 
and do a where is it? Uh, five clipper strain. All right, we'll let this run and we'll go back out and take a look after the first reboot. See what happens. Yes. Yes. Or X. All right, so we'll come back. All right, so far this has been totally painless. Wow, right out of the box. All I had to do was install Mainzel OS and Clipper Screen and didn't have to even modify anything. So, yeah, that's incredible. And the touch screen's responsive, it's clear. And it's, it's, it's perfectly aligned, the screen. Yeah, only 27 bucks too, so. Yeah, I think the the Big Tree Tech version of it, the the I don't know, I forget the name of it, the five inch version of the Big Tree Tech one, it's probably like sixty bucks. All right, so this is the one. Um, I had to make a couple different revisions of it, the mount. So if you guys want this, like I said, it'll be my Thingiverse page. All right, so all right, I'm gonna get my tripod here and I'll show you how this thing works. All right, I'll put a link down below. But you need some brass inserts. Put this over like this. You just slide this in like that. Mm -hmm. I should go in here. I gotta take the screen off for a screen cover protector. Alright. I should just pop that on there. Alright, there we go. Yeah, the outline, the black outline is not even on, on the cell CD. That's why you see more black on the top. Alright, then the locks, these M3 screws, but then the locks, they just lock down like on that. So good. I can do this one hand, but the lock just locks down there like these. The M3 screw in my hair. So you have four little inserts on each side. Like that, and there's one, two on the other side. That's why I actually have holes. One is to get the insert. Um, it's also that. That's why I have these holes right here, so you can fit these little tabs through here. Also to put the insert in, so the tab will just fit right through there. All right, so I'm actually powering mine from the GPIO pins going back to a buck converter, but that you could also. Um, run a uh, power cable so I have that there to slot that or um, also to I'm actually going to run in uh, wires too from here but I guess for now I can just do a USB cable so I gave it enough room where you can actually flip it back into there just pop that back around through here I guess I could have made it bigger I guess but I don't know yeah, because I wanted to be able to put like an accelerometer, a USB accelerometer, because I'm not going to have it permanently connected. But my original idea was to, or you can get like a smaller USB-C cable, um, was to run it off a of GPIO, or the communication between the board and here, GPIO. As far as the first time, yeah, this is going to be reversed, so I'm going to have to go in because it's, uh, power's on your side. So, um, same thing as like a touch screen. I'll show you what, Configure it. It'll be in my Thingiverse page, but also the the YouTube. All right, didn't blow up. That's a good sign. Yeah. So there's typically a couple different places you get the modify. You need to modify on the command file, um, and then also once it boots, it boots and loads X, you have to. So there's three different things you have to do. Uh, places to to flip it 180. Plus, plus, you need to flip the touch screen part 180. But you can flip the screen, but then you also have to flip, uh, do the actual touch pad. So, all right, let me go back and flip this and uh, come back. Yeah, I've done this all, I mean, many all my different seven inch touch screens, I have to do the same thing. So, I'm already familiar with that already. All right, I got to clip her up. Now, if everything goes as planned.
Let's see if touch works. Okay, man, it doesn't work. Hey, everything looks good. Touch screen working? Yeah, actually it was a syntax error. I was missing a minus sign. But uh, alright, I'll upload this to my Thingiverse page and um, I'll put the current commands down below and also my Thingiverse page, but they kind of change depending on what distribution you're in. So, like I've been over the years, I've had to modify the files in different places. So, yeah, I am surprised for $27 how crisp this thing looks. Alright, guys, cool. Now I can go to the next phase of this printer. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, um, subscribe to my channel. But uh, if you want to know what I'm doing with this printer, it's uh, going to be a little ABS printer that I'm uh, designing specifically for like high temp filaments. That's why it's, I mean, it's the metal enclosure and I'm going to be doing a full enclosure on this thing. So, all right, cool.